All right, thanks for watching and let's do another complex number special because have you ever wondered why we never do max or min problems with complex functions? Because it turns out it's very easy to do and that's what's called the maximum modulus principle. And it simply says the following. Suppose you have a closed and bounded set k with boundary partial k and suppose you have a holomorphic or complex differentiable function f then it turns out the maximum of the absolute value of f otherwise we can't really say maximum for complex numbers on the whole set k with the boundary is just equal to the maximum of the bound of the function on the boundary so in other words, in order to find the maximum of a function on the whole set, you just need to look at the boundary, which is much, much easier to do. And this has many uh, nice consequences. You can show like uniqueness of solutions to Laplace's equation, for example. It's very, very nice. But what I want to do today, it's a little math cookie in some sense. Uh, I want to show the following. Not only is this true for the function itself, but it's also true for the real and imaginary parts. So if f is of the form u of plus iv, then the biggest value of the real part is on the boundary and also the biggest value of the imaginary part is on the boundary as well. And this has to do with some very clever transform and I want to show that the following. So here's a trick. So instead of considering f, consider the following function e of f. So kind of crazy because you wouldn't think that e of f would work but it does then e of f it's e of u plus iv and that is e of u and an e of iv then well f is holomorphic so g is also holomorphic by the chen lu so by the maximum modulus principle we know that the maximum value of the absolute value of g on the boundary is just the maximum value of uh, g, so absolute value of g, but on the boundary. So, sorry, the maximum value on the whole set is the maximum value on the boundary. And what is the absolute value of g? Well, it's the absolute value of e of u, e of iv. But look, e of iv, iv is purely imaginary, so this is just one. So, Absolute value of g of z is e of u, but here's the thing. The biggest value of e of u is attained whenever u has its biggest value and vice versa. So what this actually turns out to be, it's simply the following. It just says that the maximum value on the whole set k bar of u is just the maximum value of u but on the boundary. And similarly for the minimum, so it turns out if you want to do the minimum, you don't use quite this, you just use the following, which is also super neat. You use the function h of z, that is e of minus if, and why? Because that is e of minus i, uh, u plus iv, and that is e of minus i u, and then e of v, c'est la v or c'est la e of v. And then you take the absolute value. Well, this is purely imaginary, so this becomes one, and then we just get e of v. So similarly, the biggest value of h of z is the biggest value of v, and we also get that the, the um, biggest imaginary part is also on the boundary. And just a couple of remarks, I think by considering minus the function, you also get that the biggest minimum, or I guess smallest minimum, is also on the boundary. And not only that, there's something called the strong maximum modulus principle, which says not only is the minimum or maximum on the boundary, it's only on the boundary. Namely, the max min cannot be inside the set, 
other than the trivial case where it's constant. So I think it's very, very neat. So it, it illustrates something fascinating about complex functions. And also I like those uh, transform tricks. They're, they're very cool. They're the Optimus uh, transform kind of. <laughs> Optimus Prime Transformer of Complex Analysis. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.